Hey, just a quick reminder here. Jesus loves you. He loves you right where you are. And he loves you no matter what, unconditionally. If you want to hear more about the love of Jesus Christ, please contact me. Go to our website, agapeonthestreets.com, and follow the link to our Telegram page, and send me a message there. You can also text me via the phone number that we have listed on our page. I would love to talk to you and share the love of Christ with you. God bless you. Greetings, brothers, sisters, friends, and foes. This is Bill from Agape on the Streets. Um, Got kind of a me is a very urgent subject I'd like to talk to you about. Obviously, to most of you, it's not very urgent. At least, that's what it seems by the action or inaction that I'm seeing. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, going out on the streets, just living on faith, trusting God for each thing I do, modeling what God showed us through living on earth with, with the apostles. Uh, I don't believe there is a more pure Um, powerful way you can live for Christ than to wake up every morning and say, Lord, where are you working today? Where do you want to use me? And that's what we've been doing here uh, through Agape on the Streets uh, for going on six years now. Um, We were doing stuff before that, but God really brought us to um, all or nothing. And I had quite a few people uh, involved praying uh, with this and supporting and I know a lot has happened since then. You know, we went through COVID. A lot of people have lost work. A lot of people have died. And so things have changed. But the inaction that I'm seeing now is um, it's disheartening. It's alarming. Um, it's actually kind of gross because I see people living it up, literally this country club Christianity, uh, just trying to get everything going again. Um, all based kind of on a feel-good um, idealism. It's, you know, I thought going through COVID that as the church we would learn a lot about being ready in season and out of season, you know, being ready for all things, uh, being a little more serious, you know, using our church buildings for more than just a comfortable Sunday morning service, actually going out getting involved with the community, reaching the community, and then bringing them in for a lot of things where they have needs. Uh, There's some of the churches that have done that, and God bless you. Um, like I, I still have some supporters, some prayer warriors, and I know God uh, is and will continue to bless you mightily. But there is a large group that um, they've either just ignore everything now, they've disappeared, Or they'll come onto our social media sites and stuff and just check every time something's posted for five seconds. There's never a reply. There's never any support. Uh, If they do give any support, they go off on a private message and say this or that because I guess they're, I don't know, you don't want to be involved in the group. And God tells us we're two or more gathered in his name. He's there in their midst. And and that's where I try to use that social media to, to put us together. So, uh, you know, there's a little iron sharpens iron going on there. We can throw some subjects back and forth. Uh, There's some accountability going on there. And there's corporate prayer. And um, I'm hardly seeing that at all anymore. It's really sad. Uh, Giving is down to nearly zero. There's been a few people. And God bless you. Uh, I love you to pieces. And I love your heart. And I know God loves your heart. Because one thing he has told me clearly is that this is urgent. Going into the streets and reaching our youth for Christ. Some of the same, very same people, just dealing with this last week, somebody come up to me and they're complaining about how crazy it is in the inner cities. Oh, I'm glad I'm not down there and America's gone to hell. Our kids are so brainwashed and so twisted. And I let him go on for a little while and I nicely said, bro, what are you doing to change it? Are you going down there? Heck, I haven't even seen you on any of our sites joining us in prayer about it. The church is really good at complaining and saying, look at how crazy it is. But, you know, Christ went out there and did something about it. Um, The church that um, I did the rebuild for on Catalina Island, 
there's uh, some people out there I, I consider them as true family. I've known them for a long time. And they've started watching the Chosen series on Sunday night. And uh, yeah, I know the Chosen isn't perfectly accurate. There's a lot of paraphrasing done. But I think it, if you view it properly and you go back to your Bible and you look at what the Bible says about all these things, at least it gets a picture in your head. And we realize that, you know, we read the Bible sometimes. Yeah, I've read that before. And it doesn't go to our heart. And watching Jesus meet the woman at the well and that whole thing go down, watching the interaction between Jesus and Nicodemus, wow, I've seen myself there working this great job at Christian Broadcasting, make a fortune. And wow, I don't need to go out in the streets and do anything. I'm doing a Christian job. God's dealt with me on that and then go into Matthew and he's like you want me I felt that side too quite often when I just feel like a piece of trash in the streets and he sends somebody up to just totally bless me um, praise God for that hey everyone just a quick reminder don't forget to go to our website agapeonthestreets.com and share it with your friends Share it with whomever you think can benefit from the true love of Jesus Christ. And I think right now especially we all can. In a very hurt and frustrated world, the love of Christ heals. It brings us joy and hope. Please spread the love of Christ by helping us here at Agape on the Streets. I'm really pleading with God right now to touch some of your hearts and God has put on my heart that I need to just come right out with this with you guys that um, if we can't get excited about seeing God's work done in the streets we're not very in tune with God we're, we're not excited for Christ okay we're just excited for our own little lives the little game we play country club Christianity I love you guys. I love you dearly. Um, but that's not it. That's that's not Christianity. Christianity is is going out. It is going out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I hear people, people tell me that's not my ministry. Yes, that's your ministry. It's everyone's ministry. How you go about it might be a little different. But if you're not going outside of the walls of church on Sunday morning and living Christianity, then you're not living as a Christian. It's that simple, brothers and sisters. If we know the true and living God, if we realize how amazing that is, we're not going to be able to hold back. We're going to be just stirring inside to go out in the streets, especially when we see the hurt and the anger and, and the pain, the frustration out there to say, we have the answer. Jesus loves you. He's got an answer to all of this. So I'm praying that for you guys right now. And if you're watching this and you haven't run across Agape on the Streets before, please get a hold of me. Go to our website, agapeonthestreets.com. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to join forces with anyone who wants to go out there. Maybe it's your first time. Maybe you've gone out there a lot and just like to join up. Get a hold of me. Get a hold of me. If you don't have money to give if you don't have uh you know we've got a lot of needs right now we've been looking for a small cargo trailer or a cargo van some way to move on here uh, from this job on catalina island and to be able to go out on the streets without dragging a big trailer behind us uh, as you know josie has been gotten married and him and star now are discussing what it's going to look like raising their family and stuff and uh you know we've been making discussions on the trailer to we take that up to a piece of property where they can get going, and then that leaves leaves me. Where do I go? What do I do? And uh, right now, I'm going on, on just literally handouts just for food. Uh, maybe you saw Josiah's video. I posted links to it on our website where he discussed his time with us, uh, how he was blessed. And he mentioned that it's the non-Christians that support us more than the Christians. He was blown away. He saw it. And that shouldn't be. Literally, I go out in the streets. There's people say, I, I don't even understand. I don't get this God thing. But I've never seen someone with a heart to come out here and love on us. And, and they and they support us. Sometimes the tune of $500. I had a guy just out of nowhere handed me 500 bucks. 
and uh, that seems to be this number that happens in the streets. It's amazing because several times it's it's been 500 bucks. I'm just out there saying, Lord, you know, what's the next step? Where do we go? You know, where's your provision? And boom, you know. And um, you know, with the economy and stuff right now, that isn't a lot of money anymore. Um, we are very careful with where we spend our money, uh, living very much on the cheap, living nomadically. Um, I've become very good, especially with uh, throwing events and equipment. As you guys know, I've been a pro audio uh, and lighting guy for quite a long time, and I've learned how to even do our little events and stuff on the cheap. We can do a really good quality job, have a good presentation that goes over well, and not spend much money at all on it. Um, there's another thing I, I put out to you guys is uh, my heart is if I have to I'll work for support and I've asked this to many churches and I hear it's a great idea and stuff but that's that in the drops there if it's a great idea give me a call let me work with you I can come in and redo your audiovisual system I can get you new gear I have a lot of connections in the industry I can redo your lighting I love to work with you guys I do training I do repair uh, support me and I will support you and together we can continue to do God's work uh, on what in what other ever avenue he has us you know uh, I am not against the organized church I've heard a lot of stuff out there saying you know I'm against ministry that goes outside the United States and I'm against churches that's not true at all I know for a fact God has a place for all those things but I am calling an urgency to our own backyard I have made the statement that it's amazing how we can spend so much money, so much resource sending people around the world when our own backyard is in the condition it's in and you just don't hear about it from many churches. Um, I've shared several instances where uh, I've gone to these big mega churches and heard, you know, they, they talk about these, oh, we're doing this outreach and da da da, but they don't leave the building. And then I drive outside the parking lot. And through some of my contacts, find out there's a guy right there in one of the houses right next to the church doing full-on sex trafficking with little kids. And the church isn't even aware. I could drive out, drive past that house and tell you in two seconds what's going on there. But um, these are some of the things I, I like to connect with you all on. Um, if you go to our agapeonthestreets.com website, there's a phone number on there where you can text me. You can go to our Telegram, that's always the best way. Download Telegram, it's a free app, it's a great app to chat with, they don't censor you. And you can go on to our Telegram chat page. I'm looking for a few of you, as I get to know you, that uh, can join our prayer page. Uh, that's by invite only, where our prayer warriors are, and unfortunately, uh, what used to be a major powerful uh, force there on our prayer page um, it's just gotten sleepy. It's like have we gotten lazy or what? Because uh, the enemy has not gotten lazy. He's attacking out there like crazy. Um, I've been going to some ladies here on the island now that uh, have started a very spirit-filled uh, prayer healing ministry, and that really shook me because I remembered what our team used to used to be like. And now it's, you know, there's a couple people on there, God bless you, that are still active. Uh, but most of them, I'll post on there, I won't hear it a couple days later, you know, I'll be talking to them privately, saying, yeah, man, well, I'm, I'm praying for you. Really? Well, thank you for your prayers, but let's join corporately. Let's make those prayers powerful. Let's make them powerful. Let's come together united as one voice unto God and plead with our Lord Jesus Christ that he would break down the strongholds here in America, that he would expose the lies, expose the evil, that he would protect us as we go on the streets and reach these people and show them that Christ is love. He's not what the media's made him out to be. He's not hate, okay? He's not a bunch of rules, although I know some churches are, and, and uh, God forgive you. God forgive you. You're inoculating people out there. It's all you're doing. We need to love them to Christ and then let Christ heal them. I don't care if they're gay, transgendered, I don't care what they are. That's not our concern. That's God's job. Get out of God's way. Our biggest problem is we stand in His way. We try to do His job. We're not God. Our job is to love them. 
and to lead him to the love of Christ so that he can heal him. All glory and honor goes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's where we are as Christians. Otherwise, we're not acting as Christians. It's that simple. And uh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm stepping on some toes here because it needs to be. Because there's people getting hurt out there. And not only are people getting hurt out there, but now you're hurting the people in the church that are trying to reach them with love out there. Uh, and the church, that's not what it is. It's a body. And when the body stops to function, when my, my foot has to act as my hand too, because my hand refuses to, to go out and reach, then we got some problems. We've got some serious problems. That's what I'm seeing in the church, in a lot, a lot, a lot of churches. The bodies, the, the body parts are not doing their function. They found excuses not to be functional. And now they're forcing those that are a completely different body part. They don't have the gifting, but they're trying to make up for it. And that's not going to end well. I think God's got some grace and mercy there, but um, God's not pleased with that. He's not happy. And God has done so much for us. He died on the cross. Take some time and meditate on that when you think things are inconvenient, when you think you hurt. Okay, I've got two fractured ribs right now. I can hardly sit in this chair. And I'm not going to sit here and toot my horn. But what gets me through that, okay, it hurts. It's hard. But I remember that my Lord Jesus Christ went through so much worse. This is a joke. A couple fractured ribs. Look what he went through. And he picked up that cross, very heavy. Do a little research, do a little history, uh, a little learning there, what he was really carrying. It was an old two-by-four thing. He picked up that cross and climbed a mountain with it. Okay? For us. For us. What are we willing to do for him? We could never repay him. But are we going to at least make a step? Or are we just going to use that as an excuse? Well, I can't repay him, so I'm going to sit here on my butt. God forgive you. God forgive you. Because there's others out there that you might be the only Jesus they ever see. And if the Jesus they see sits on their butt and makes rules and runs away, they have no reason to know who Jesus is. So, brothers and sisters, I do love you. I pray for God's blessing on you. Please, please take this to heart. I like to hear from you. And I like to know that it's even worth it to continue on reaching out to you guys. You know, there's the part of being in the streets with the kids, but the other side of this was reaching back to the church, showing you what's going on in the streets. I haven't done much of that lately because I have zero, zero interest by what I can tell. And um, if you want to get strong, if you want your faith to get strong, you have to practice faith. I did the analogy of that in one of my messages where you drop somebody in the middle of a lake that doesn't know how to swim and they drown. And you can show them videos on how to swim. You can do teaching. They might look a little better doing it. They're still not going to make it to shore. They're going to drown. But if you take them out there in a boat and you put them out there for a couple minutes, they go a few feet and then they go a few more feet and then they go a few more. Pretty soon they're going to swim back to shore. That's exactly how our faith works. So let's get going here. Let's build that faith. So we're rocking for Jesus. So these things aren't swaying us. We don't turn on the news and go, look at poor us. No, we are children of the Almighty God. We are blessed. We are protected. Amen? We are out here to do great things. The Bible even talks about us rejoicing in these end times, just praising God, because we know that his kingdom is at hand. God bless you all. Uh, until next time. This is Bill from Agape on the Streets. And uh, again, I love all of you very much. And I'm praying that this uh, this starts to make sense to you. Uh, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disheartened, a little hurt. Uh, but I love you. I love all of you. And I know everyone's going through a hard time. But you want to get through a hard time? we got to pick up our cross. we got to pick up that cross and we got to follow Jesus. We can do it on our own. 
God bless you all. Hey everyone, just a quick reminder. There is healing in the love of Jesus Christ. The true unconditional love of Christ leads people to Him. It heals people. It is a true world changer. And as we see all the crazy stuff going around and we're praying about it, let us act by spreading His love on the streets.